So the place to start is with you, Keith, as you're <laughs> a regular member of Sky's coverage of the Republic of Ireland. You've seen this story from beginning to end. Any surprise to you whatsoever that this has happened? Uh, surprised because I didn't think the FAO would be able to afford to sack Martin. The contract was awarded in, in January, prolonged after the loss to Denmark 12 months ago. There was links to Stoke in January. That didn't sit particularly well with the general public in Ireland. Um, so I am surprised, Jeff. but if you're basing on results, one win in the last 11, if this had been a traditional type of qualification campaign, we'd be sat on two points out of 12 and we wouldn't be getting to a European Championships. So because there's a different format this time around with the Nations League, I have to say I think it's the right decision. I mean, you say sacked, the term mutual consent has been used. Mm. How do you actually read between the lines? I read that there's been a compromise agreed between the, the parties involved, Martin and his management team, the FAI, um, they probably haven't got the full amount of money that was due to them. But I think when you look at the, the body language of Martin in particular over the last couple of games, he's looked defeated. He hasn't had that same energy that he normally has. He hasn't had that same bite in his press conferences post-match <laughs> that we've seen quite frequently from him in the last year in particular. What, what was the turning point? Because I, I don't think anybody would argue there weren't some fantastic highs, you, you think, about the European Championships, mm. the win over Germany beating Wales um, to go into the playoff. Some tremendous performances and achievements. Where did it go wrong? I'm with you, Jeff. I think there has been, and I think his reign as a whole should be regarded as good because he's got us through the European Championships. He has mm. produced some of the biggest nights in Irish football during his watch. But if you go back 12 months ago, and that's when it started, nil-nil away in Copenhagen, got some criticism. I didn't personally agree with it because I thought going away from home, being pragmatic, playing a little bit defensive in the way that we should set up because we haven't got personnel no, 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 in certain person. areas, no problem. Come back to the Aviva, just imploded. Chased the game, being a 2-1 down at half-time. We got picked off, left Christian Eriksen, have the freedom of Dublin, took full advantage. And since then, with the, the link to Stoke in January, off the pitch problems with Declan Rice, that whole saga. In the summer, then we've seen incidents where there's leaked voice notes, painted Roy Keane in a certain picture. It's been a mess. And that's off the pitch and all those different aspects. On the pitch, it's progressively got worse. In the last two games, the players have looked lifeless. They really have. You two have both played for Martin O'Neill. Mm. Are you surprised at anything that Keith has said there in terms of knowing what you know about him? as a coach and the assistance he normally has with him that seemingly not he's lost the players but he's lost the ability to get those performances from a team well you know watching Ireland closely over the last you know <coughs> last, well I've said I've always watched them closely even from uh, 88 European Championships to 1990 World Cup so I've always had um, you know always grown up watching Ireland as well but um, I'd say due to you know I watched the game against Wales when they won um, they're a very defensive team, but they were hard to beat, hard to break down. Um, would look to counter attack with dangerous offset pieces. I thought they'd done a very good job in Cardiff that night. But I remember, like, I actually went and seen Martin O'Neill after the game, um, and actually going talking to him and speaking to the, about the players. And this is not him; this was me saying this. Um, I said, I, I think you've done one really um, very impressive job with the players you have at your disposal, um, and that's. You know, it's, it's not, I, I apologise for being harsh on the Ireland players, but I just don't, I've always seen Irish players down the years with a good number of quality players. Yeah. Um, this group at this present moment, um, they haven't got, it, 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 it does look lifeless and has been worrying and I can see why this has happened. I could, especially after, um, I, I was concerned even with the Northern Ireland game. I thought Northern Ireland were by far the better team. I thought Ireland were very fortunate to come up with that game of a draw. Um, but you're right, even his interviews didn't look like Martin mm. O'Neill. Um, I just think there's a big transition period with Republic of Ireland at the moment. I don't see young players coming through at this present moment, but if or there are... young players not good enough? Uh, good enough to come... But we do, I don't know that I'm not... I, can, I couldn't tell you if there are other players at younger age groups coming through. I see Ireland at this present moment. I see probably the right decision with someone else to take on because it needs to be a transition period now where even these young players who might not be good enough at this present moment, get them in. Mm. Get them in, go through a couple of years of hurt, because I believe a lot of the players they have now 
and not at a level certain forward wise they don't have those type of players to compete to qualify for major tournaments at that's at this present moment they can definitely be hard to beat definitely but to qualify now in competitions i think you need a little bit more than that and what i've seen from mine in the last two years i think they're now they're gonna have to go through a couple of years of pain uh, for the long run of Irish football, for them to get back to where we've always seen Ireland. And, you know, and that's not qualifying for every tournament, um, but qualifying for more tournaments than, say, for instance, our own country, my own country, sorry, Wales have been used to. Um, we always expect Ireland to have a good go in qualifiers, and they're a couple of years away from that for me at the moment. I mean, in his statement, Steve, Martin O'Neill said, it, you know, it is with heavy heart that this relationship ends. Uh, and he's, he recognised that this is going to be a period of transition. That's why he's given so many caps, new caps, in the last yep. uh, year or so. But what are his qualities and would he be suited as a coach to be in charge of a club or a country during a transitional period? Or is he somebody who works better with more senior figures? I think he's, he's definitely a man's manager. I think he's used to an old school approach, definitely. I mean, listen, I played under him, Aston Villa 2008, round to 2010, so I'm going back 10 years ago now. And I still kind of think maybe he's, he's not evolved with football as much as everyone else has around him. Um, I think with the form that Ireland have shown, especially in this past year, it's probably coming hand in hand with what you just said there about blooding new players in, new caps uh, and, and players on the field. Listen, I've, I've been, throughout my career, I've been blessed to play with Irish legends of, of Shane Given, uh, uh, Damien Duff, obviously you've seen uh, John Waters, Glenn Whelan, you know, players that loved going to play for their country. And I look at Marto O'Neill uh, this, this calendar year and you can see his body language and his approach as what the others have said has, has not been himself. And I think if you take that away from him, that's what he's all about, his man management, his knack of getting that extra... Mm. 10, 15, 20% out of every player, whether he be a world-class player or an average player, to really raise their game. And I think when you look at him and he looks lost within himself, then he's not the same person. Keith, there's a, a lot of scrutiny of the partnership between Martin O'Neill mm. and Roy Keane. Do you think it worked as a partnership or because of some of the incidents you mentioned just now, it just did not work? Well, ultimately, in the end, in the last year, he's part of that process that hasn't worked in the last year. But I stand by what I said initially. The first three quarters of this reign has to be seen as a successful period. Mm. The areas where it falls down are going back to what Steve said. Ten years ago, that type of management may well have worked. And we have a lot of players that have retired in the last year to two that would have been used to that type of management. But players now, as the two lads are well aware of, need different requirements. So if Martin is that kind of man management, quirky manager that we're, we're used to seeing on TV and interviews and the way he, he deals with, with players, that's fine. But then your backroom staff have to complement that. And if that's not the case, it's going to fall down, especially when players are getting the level of detail that they are getting now at club level. Yeah. It doesn't happen with this Ireland team. Progressively, it has got worse, going from game to game, systems not similar, players playing out of position. Cyrus Christie being a prime example, playing central midfield the last few games, like a fish out of water. Really was. So I've got sympathy for him. It simply hasn't worked, and it's the right time to change it. But the, the, the thing that worried me, especially in the last few games as well, that it has been coming, is that there, there's not been a style of play. There's mm. not been like a philosophy of, yeah. of, especially when they've got maybe a goal down or, or two goals down, where you said they're about Denmark and they've come out second half and they just, they look lost. You're spot on, because I'm not sat here as a football and purist. I, I, I'm being realist. And we've mentioned about the players that are available. Mm. I'm being realistic as to what we can achieve. So what's realistic with us being, being able to do? Can we qualify for World Cups? No divine <coughs> right. That group that Craig was talking about, we were in Cardiff together, Austria, Serbia, mm. part of the group. No divine right to get in and around that top of that group, tough group. World Cups, sorry, European Championships should be achievable. But what these players need is a plan of action to be as effective. So we all know Robbie Keane's unavailable. We all know we haven't got creative players. That's fine. But you can be difficult to break down. You can play with huge energy, huge legs, huge appetite. You can organise a set of players to be competitive. And that hasn't been the case over the last year. So having said that, and what is available, who is the ideal 
candidate to take over. Mick McCarthy is the favourite. Mm. But as we said about go, go back, <laughs> uh, I'll contradict myself there. Or do you need somebody like Stephen Kenny who really knows the system and knows the players? Yeah, so there'll, there'll be a split. Stephen Kenny has done very, very well in the League of Ireland with Dundalk um, and would have a huge mm. kind of reaction in Ireland to that. But if you flip it onto its head and think about what the players might think of that, they might think that that was a step back because it would be such a huge jump. Looking at Mick McCarthy, if Mick McCarthy was to come in, I think there needs to be somebody with him. He will probably bring Terry Connor in as, a, as his trusted lieutenant. But then there needs to be somebody, a la Lee Carsley, Stephen Reid, a coach that has Irish connections that can be that goal between between the senior team, 21s, and get that link as Craig thinks because we have got some very good players. Probably not ready just yet, but we have integrated a couple over the last couple of weeks. Michael Obafemi at Southampton, Leo O'Connor from Manchester United. There's very good players at 17s, 18s, 19s level that need that little bit of nurturing. I personally wouldn't be against Mick McCarthy at all. I think he would be a safe pair of hands because the kind of the carrot and the distance here is we host two games in the Euro 2020s. So f for us not to be there yeah. would be a disaster. Mm. So for me, if Mick McCarthy took over, I would be I would be quite pleased. Okay, just before we move on, um, can you see? Roy Keane and Martin O'Neill working together again, or do you think they'll go their separate ways? Um, I, I believe they'll probably go their separate ways due to maybe Roy wanting to go his own way, wanting to go back into management himself. Um, Martin O'Neill, like I've, you know, I came through football with him. Um, I was at Celtic with him as well, and he always had um, John Robertson, who was um, incredible. Incredible as a man was um, was a huge help to Martin O'Neill. He hasn't replaced him. Um, I mean, Martin O'Neill's a lot of his success was with Steve Walford, uh, but John Robinson as well because he was he was the go between yeah. between mm. the players and the manager. You don't realise how important they are. Yeah, he mm. was um, he was just the life and soul of of what Martin O'Neill represented. Element. And Martin O'Neill could you know could be. Um, very serious when he wanted to be, you know. He was. If you played well, he was brilliant to you. Brilliant man manager. If you didn't, um, you soon let. He would soon let you know about you. You sort of had a good understanding of what terms you are with him. But with John, uh, with Robbo, you always knew where you. No matter if you played well or played, but he was always there for you. He really cared about you. Um, yeah. I think he's he's had a few problems. You know, he didn't have him at Sunderland. Um, he hasn't had him with Ireland. I think he's he needs to find a replacement to John Robinson before he goes back into management, I find.